Hello there, my name is Mark Thompson and I'm with Isaiah Industries and uh, we at Isaiah Industries would like to produce a segment, uh, a series of segments, uh, video segments about putting on our roofing systems. We're going to be focusing specifically on our Castlewood product, but uh, we want you to know that we also produce a number of other products including aluminum and steel products. Uh, we've been in business for over 30 years and one of our products is over 50 years old. So um, we have a lot of experience in the roofing industry. Uh, we really believe in metal roofing solutions um, as opposed to many roofing uh, products which are temporary in nature, which uh, begin to fade very quickly over time and uh, end up uh, putting the homeowner in a vicious recycling and re-roofing uh, cycle. Uh, our, our products have the highest of, of wind ratings, the highest of impact ratings. They really are a lifetime solution as well as being very uh, green oriented. Uh, they do an excellent job of energy savings in the summer and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, tearing off a roof and filling up a landfill and so it really they really are a green solution to your roofing needs. We have produced several installation manuals that um, accompany our roofing products and as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at our Castlewood um, roofing product. We have a 37 page detailed instruction manual that includes pictures and uh, accompanying text that will be very helpful to you in your roofing project. Now before we begin, I might mention that there are a number of tools that are very uh, useful and even essential in doing a proper roofing project. Um, as you can see, I've got my tool belt on here. Of course, you're going to want a, a good hammer. I would suggest something with a rubber handle that can help you position the shingles properly. Along with that, I always like to take a, a piece of wood, a wood block, that's going to help me to be able to tap the, sh the shingles in place without actually denting the shingles. Of course, you're going to want uh, aviation snips. I tend to like the straight ones, but they also come in right-handed and left-handed versions. Tin snips are, are very helpful in making longer cuts. Uh, certainly you want a Stanley knife. Uh, in some instances you can score a, a piece of metal and work it back and forth and get a nice clean, clean break with that. A combination square of course is going to be able to help you to make uh, good uh, perpendicular lines to, to make your cuts. Of course you're going to want a, a tape measure. And uh, I like to use a sliding bevel which enables me then to take something like this pitch finder which we're able to supply at Isaiah Industries and it has specific pitches and on the ground I can set my sliding T bevel to the particular pitch of the roof and then when I want to make my my cuts uh, my plumb cuts, such as at the end of my gable trims, I can do that on the ground and do it very easily and make repetitive cuts. Now we want to particularly look at um, some of the details from our instruction manual. And I'd like to just review some general instruction information, installation instructions at the, at the beginning here. With regard to fasteners, uh, the Castlewood system of course is a steel product and therefore we're going to want to use uh, galvanized ring shank nails or stainless steel ring shank nails. 
want to make sure that those nails are long enough to fully penetrate the deck. When it comes to installing our lineal pieces, our, our lineal pieces such as our, our sidewall flashings, our gable trims, our valley pieces are held on with a clip system. Uh, those clips are going to be uh, put along the, the hem every foot. And it is permissible to put one nail in the water return uh, portion of the lineals at the very top up near the ridge to keep it from slipping as you're putting your, your side clips in. It's important to uh, mention that uh, we always overlap our pieces if, if we need more than one piece to say go from eave to ridge on a gable. We're going to overlap uh, two to three inches. Uh, it is again permissible to put one nail at the top and then to lap the top piece over the bottom piece. Uh, we always want to nest our pieces such as with our valleys with the top piece over the bottom. Anytime we have a situation where we've got two dissimilar metals, we want to make sure that we isolate those metals that we're putting um, underlayment, uh, say between the masonry uh, pieces, the brick on a chimney, and the metal. So we're going to run the underlayment up the side. Uh, four inches up, up the side is a, is a good height. Another good thing to, to remember is, is to plan your layout ahead of time so that you can minimize cutting. It's going to be especially important when you come into valleys where you don't want to have uh, little awkward pieces that you have to make into a triangular shape. You can avoid that by um, shifting where you're starting your shingles on this end or perhaps even putting in a short shingle in the middle of your course as you come to the valley. Uh, the regular insulation sequence, uh, first thing of course is that you want to make sure that you have your underlayment down. In many areas of the country you're going to be required to put down ice and water shield at the eaves on a new construction. Oftentimes that's going to be 24 inches inside the outer wall. And so you're going to, to put your ice and water shield on. One thing we really want to uh, emphasize here at Isaiah Industries is that when you put your underlayment on, you want to lap it over the edge an inch. And that applies to both the eaves and the gables. So both on the ice and water shield and on the synthetic underlayment, go over the edge an inch. Do not cut it flush. Um, after you have uh, put on your ice and water shield and then put on your regular underlayment, which can either be synthetic or 30 pound felt, uh, we, we tend to like the synthetic underlayments that are, are not going to deteriorate over time. But after, after you've got your underlayment on and you've lapped things properly, and by the way, I might mention that when you, when you put your underlayment on and you come into uh, valley sections, don't cut your underlayment off at the valley, but rather lap it, weave it, and lap it over from both directions. So after we've got our underlayment down, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our eave starter strip. And then we're going to put our gable trim in. And then we're going to put our valley pieces in. And uh, then as we shingle up the roof, we're going to go ahead and put sidewall pieces alongside of dormers. And uh, if you have a side, a long sidewall, put that. And you're going to want to make sure that that sidewall flashing is lapped up underneath um, your siding, if at all possible. If not possible, uh, perhaps you're able to cut a kerf and uh, bend that sidewall flashing and put it into the kerf. After you've done all that perimeter work, then you're going to be able to go ahead and begin with your shingling process. And eventually, then you're going to 
address any hip situations, and then finally you're going to you know, put your caps on your ridge. <coughs>